السلام عليكم. This is Abdul Rahman, a student of King Faisal University. We are in part 10 of a series of lessons in C# -sharp using console app. In this lesson, we will learn about user-defined methods. Methods help in organizing codes by dividing long codes to smaller ones. We make repeatable codes easy to maintain. In our past lessons, we have been using and calling methods that are already included in .NET. These include consoles write and write line and math methods max, min, and pow. But the only visible method with the structure that we see from the beginning is the main method. This time, we will create our own methods and call them in our main method. We will learn its syntax, the difference between void and non-void, static and non-static, and last, we will learn how to overload methods. The header of a method includes modifier, return type, method name, and parameters or signature. Access modifiers specify the accessibility option of a member such as method, property, or a class. There are five different types of access modifiers, public, private, protected, internal and protected internal. For now, we will only use public methods. The return type could be void or non-void. For non-void, like an example, a valid data type such as int means that the method will return integer value. Void, however, means that it will not return any value. Next are the methods name and parameters. The parameters are values that are needed inside a method. We are going to work on only one project for this lesson, but we will revise it several times. To start, we will create a new project that has a static void method sum to add and display two numbers. These two numbers will be treated as parameters. We will do the input part in the main method. Then we will call the sum method. So let's create a new project and name it CA10 underscore one. Let's begin by creating our sum method. It will have two parameters. We will get their sum and put it in a variable. We will display their sum. In the main method, we will ask for the two numbers. And we will call the sum method with num1 and num2 as arguments. Remember that the sum method is void, which means it does not return any value. Let's run it and enter numbers 10 and 17. The sum of 10 and 17 is 27. Great start! Let's continue with our first edit of our project. Here, we will change some method to non void by returning an end value and moving the display statement inside the main method. If you want to do it on your own, please pause this video now. Let's change void to end. Write a return statement by returning result. Move the display statement to the main method. Since sum is now non-void, we can put the returned value to another variable like res. Last, we just need to change our arguments in right line. num1 for n1, num2 for n2, and res for result. Great job! Try to run it with 10 and 17 again, and expect the same result. This time, we will discuss overloading. 
This means that a method like our sum can be declared several times, as long as they have different types or number of parameters. To understand it further, let's go to our next modification activity. This time we will add another sum method, but with three parameters. If you want to do it on your own, pause this video now. Let's just copy our sum method and change it by adding a third parameter. You now have two methods with the same name, sum, right? Is there any error? There is none, because we simply overloaded sum method and they are different because the first one has two parameters while the other has three. In the main method, let's just copy the two lines for the second integer and paste it for the third integer. Let's also copy the call to the sum method including the display statement to call the second sum method with the three parameters. Let's run it with input of 3, 9, and 7. Well done! To make a method non-static, simply remove the word static. Let's make our two sum methods non-static by removing the word static. What happened? There are now errors in the main method. One way to remove the error is to make an object of our class and use that object name to call the sum methods. But why? We just stepped on the concepts of a class and object. Here the class is program and its object is p. Remember this, static methods belong to a class, while non-static methods belong to an object. That's why when we made our sum methods non-static, we had to create an object of our class program to be able to call them. For our last modification, we will cut our two sum methods. Create a new class called my methods in the same project and place the two methods there. Do you see the new error in the main method? Do you know why? It's because the sum methods now belong to our new class my methods. So to correct it, instead of making an object of a program class, create an object of my methods class. Oof, that surely was long, but I hope you learned many things. As a challenge, you need to modify our project again by adding another sum method with four parameters in my method class. Make sure to modify the main method to ask the fourth number and to apply this method. Good luck! In our next lesson, we will be discussing classes and objects. Thank you for visiting this channel.